Hi y'all, Liz here with your Daily Lizard and we're talking about predictably irrational again today. And today I wanna to talk about, I believe it's chapter two, the fallacy of supply and demand. One of the ideas in this chapter, it's really cool to me. Now this whole chapter is kind of about anchoring and um, a little bit of FOMO is built in there. Uh, but this idea is about how we sort of get in line behind ourselves. We create a queue because whenever you see a long queue of, of people in line, you naturally begin to think that this must be good. Whatever this thing is that people are lining up for must be good. And the idea here that I really love is how we create our own queue. We create our own line. So the example, that I want to talk about is let's pretend that you normally drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee or McDonald's coffee and you like it. It's great. It's fine. It's exactly what you're looking for. It's coffee and you drink it every day. But one day you're walking by Starbucks and you think, eh, should I go in or, you know, should I walk a couple more blocks down to Dunkin' Donuts? And you decide, eh, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna check it out. Everybody always talks about Starbucks. I've never had it, I'm gonna see what it's like. Okay, so you go in, you get your small Americano coffee, and you sit down and you drink it, and you're like, oh, all right, yeah, it's actually pretty darn good. And you get up and you leave. And then a few days later, you're walking by Starbucks again, and you see it and you think, eh, should I go in? And hmm, you go in again. And now you are the second person in line behind yourself. You went the first time, now you've gone again. Now every time you go to Starbucks, you're lining up behind yourself and in your own mind, you're creating a queue. You're creating a line of people going to Starbucks and making the good decision to go to Starbucks. And so you pretty soon begin to believe that the good, smart decision is to go to Starbucks. How did that happen? Now, one more thing before I move on to how that happened is once you're there and you're spending $2.85 on your small Starbucks coffee that is still twice as much as you were spending before at Dunkin' or at McDonald's, it's really easy to start thinking about getting the next size up, maybe the grande coffee instead of just the small, or I'm not even sure what they call the small coffee, or maybe even going up for the venti or some other fancy coffee, maybe a macchiato or a, I don't know, what are all the different kinds of cappuccino, right? So pretty soon you can find yourself spending quite a bit of money on coffee that in the past would have seemed crazy to spend so much money on. Now, how did this happen? How did you get anchored over to Starbucks when you were already anchored at Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's? How did that happen? If, if anchoring worked so strongly and so well, how did you get switched over to this other coffee? Oh, that is also very, very interesting. So what happens is, well, in this example, Starbucks did a great job of separating themselves from Dunkin' Donuts. So your daily action today is anything that you are doing on the regular, doesn't matter what it is, evaluate for yourself. Why? Why am I doing this? What got me started? What started me in the line? How did I create this cue for myself? And is it a smart decision? Is it what I want to be doing? Now you might, you might, identify that, yeah, I really do. I really get enough of a burst of a good feeling from my venti decaf latte that I want to continue going here. But you know what? You also might not. So do, do the work and think to yourself, every time you find yourself doing something that you've always done or done for a long time, evaluate. Why am I doing this? And am I getting the value that I should be getting? All right, that's it for today. Talk soon. Bye.